For the dynamic stress analysis of slugs, the timing of the slug gets important. No DLF is used here since the dynamic behavior of the slug is included in the model itself. As a reminder, the slug velocity in the example is 12.5 meters per second and the slug length is 4 meters. This means that an elbow is affected by the slug for about 0.3 seconds. As the speed with which the slug is traveling in the system is known as well, a time history of the slug traveling through the system can be created. Each of the elbows in the analysis experiences a force in two directions due to the slug at different times. It is possible to enter this information in Caesar 2 and run a dynamic analysis. The first step for Caesar 2 is then to calculate the eigenmodes of the system, as these are key to the reaction of the system to the slug forces. Without the slug loads, it is also possible to calculate the eigenmodes of a system using a modal analysis. This is a less complex option in the dynamic solver of Caesar 2. Let's have a look at the original system and do a modal analysis. We can choose a friction factor, which influences the kinetic system and is a whole topic on its own. Let, for now, let's just take a very small value. This is conservative, of course, but the too high friction factor for slug loads is also not always appropriate. We perform the modal analysis for the design case. This means that the support layout as computed in the static design case is used. Supports which have lift up during operating operation will be ignored. As a maximum frequency, 15 Hz is chosen for now, so we are mainly interested in the lowest eigenfrequencies. There are many more options in the modal analysis for Caesar 2, but we will not discuss them today. We see that the first eigenfrequency is only about 2 Hz, which is very low. It means that the system has a lot of flexibility and is sensitive to vibrations. As a rule of thumb, you can keep the minimum frequency of the system above 4 or even 5 Hz. For two-phase flows, which is a line susceptible to slugs always, a minimum of 5 or 6 Hz is advisable. This low minimum eigenfrequency we computed is already a warning that the system may be under-supported, especially for slug loads. If we have a look at the system that was improved in the static analysis to be able to handle the slug loads, we see very similar low minimum eigenfrequencies. This already signals that when a dynamic analysis of the slug loads is done, it might fail. These low eigenmodes are mainly present in the long horizontal segment that's only supported by rest supports, but also near the horizontal valve. The question of course is, whether a slug would even excite the frequencies or not. Now, to determine that, it is time to do a more elaborate dynamic stress analysis. I created a time history for each of the elbows containing the loading over time. The colors in the graph match up with some of the colors in the picture. We can recognize the long horizontal pipe section because of the lack of a loading as well as the two 45 degree elbows, which have a lower load applied to them. We can create a dynamic analysis with this information that is more elaborate than the modal analysis shown before. To understand all of the different settings and input, a deep dive into the dynamic analysis module of Caesar 2 is required. The gist of it for the time history analysis is that a force over time is defined in a number of data files. The locations for these forces and their directions are specified in the force sets tab and optionally the occasional loads can be combined with the operating or sustained loads to determine respectively the support loadings and the occasional stress in the system. Running this for the sparsely supported model gives a stress due to the slugs loads of about 133 MPa. Looking at the dynamic plot in Caesar 2, it becomes apparent that mainly the long horizontal line and the section near the valve has a lot of flexibility. This had also already been indicated by the modal analysis. The locations with the highest stress in the dynamic analysis are at the ends of this long horizontal segment. Displacements in the video, of course, are an exaggeration. For the combination of slug and sustained loads, 115% of the allowable occasional stress is obtained. This is of course too high. 
It means that more supports are required in order to properly protect the system against slug loads. Improving the design for the slug loads therefore requires more supporting. An option could be to add a three-way stop in the long horizontal section. This reduces the maximum stress in the system and increases the lowest eigenfrequency. But the system is still not acceptable. There are other locations with low minimum eigenfrequencies which can be improved by adding more supports. Of course, take care to not worsen the static situation of the system by placing the supports which displace limitedly due to the thermal expansion. This gives acceptable stress throughout the system for both the static and the dynamic analysis. We still see a few low frequency eigen modes in this mitigated system. These could be mitigated further to prevent vibrations due to other sources than slugs. There are many considerations and steps important for the dynamic analysis in Caesar 2 that we now skipped over. If you want to learn more about this topic, we offer a number of courses on it. If we now look back at only the quasi-static analysis, we can see that the results were non-conservative. The DLF partially takes this into account, but when an eigen mode is excited by the dynamic load, the reaction of the system is much larger than in the quasi-static case. However, the full dynamic study in this case was also not required to make the system acceptable. By looking at the eigenvalues of the system and by increasing these, the chance that an eigen mode is excited is lowered, which makes the system less susceptible to the slug loads. So far, we have ignored fatigue and treated the slugs just as an occasional load. With the occurrence of once every five hours in this example, it is not unreasonable. Assuming an operational life of 30 years leads to only 53,000 cycles. Even if each elbow moves a few times back and forth after being excited, this will not likely lead to fatigue, as mainly the first movement is large. It is more like a shock motion. Slugs, however, can occur much more frequently, and then fatigue is a very valid concern. If we look at the fatigue curve for the material from the example, we see that for a load, once every 5 hours we get about 50,000 cycles and an allowable stress range of more than 200 MPa. This is without taking imperfections and welds into account, but if we apply for example an FSRF or fatigue stress reduction factor of 2, we get an allowable of more than 100 MPa still. For a slug occurring once every minute, we get many more cycles and therefore a lower stress range. If the slug excites in eigen mode and the pipe vibrates for a while after each hit, the allowable reduces even further. Instead of looking at the combination of sustained and occasional load, just the stress caused by the slug has to be considered for the fatigue case. In our example, the combined stress was more than the allowable stress range of 100 MPa, but the maximum stress due to the slug only, after the mitigation, was less than 100 MPa. As we saw on the previous slide, with a stress range reduction factor, this may be acceptable for the very infrequent slug, but for the slug that is present more often, fatigue failure is predicted. If slugs occur quickly after one another, eigenmodes are more easily excited by them. A spectral analysis in Caesar 2 can be more appropriate and can reveal which eigenmodes are excited based on the slug duration and periodicity. It is then important to use the frequency at which the system reacts to that to determine the number of cycles and the allowable stress amplitude based on that. I will, however, not go into detail about fatigue analysis here.